If you've got a Sportster and you're looking for more power beyond your Stage 1, beyond that tuner, that air cleaner, and those exhausts, a Stage 2 might just be what you're looking for. That's adding a set of cams to your motorcycle. So before we get too far into it, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. So maybe you're not ready to really dive in and upgrade your 1200 to a 1250 or 1275, or you're not ready to take your 883 all the way up to that 1200 or 1250, 1275. You're just looking for a bump in power that you can use right now, and then it'll still work with components later on down the road if you choose to go up a little higher. Now, looking at camshafts, the first thing you wanna consider is how do you ride? Do you ride aggressively, like wide open, close to the red line, or are you more conservative on the street, like down low? You ride low RPMs, up to mid-range, you know, short bursts from the stoplight. What the camshaft does is that it literally allows you to tailor your power where you want it. Now, most camshafts aftermarket today for the Sportster, these camshafts, more or less, most of them, take power from the low and mid-range and shift it over to the upper RPM range. It's very difficult to find a cam that kind of gives you the best of both worlds. But I'm gonna show you a couple different brands that have actually provided dyno charts so we could have some numbers for comparison. And we're gonna see what might be the best option for you out there, depending on how you ride. Now, there are a few things to consider with changing out your camshafts on your motorcycle. Now, the factory W cams, these cams are very, very well tailored for low end and mid range, and they work very well on these motors. One other thing to expect and take into consideration when choosing an aftermarket cam is that there's gonna be an increase in the noise that you get from these gear driven cams that are in the Sportsters. At the factory with the W cams, they have different sets of cams that have different tolerances with each other, and they test fit them into each motor's cases because each motor is different. They put in the cams that have the best mesh, the best fit for that case to reduce the gear noise. So just bear that in mind when you change out to aftermarket cams, you are gonna have some increased gear noise. Now, one thing you will notice too, is if you go with the Harley Davidson's 585 cams, which is specifically for the 2014 and laters, if you guys are maintaining your emissions, like if you live in California or something, these, they really do they sound like a Ducati dry clutch. I mean, they are loud. There's nothing wrong with the bike, they're just loud with the way the gears mesh, and they have a pretty harsh ramp angle to them as well. So also, with choosing a new set of cams, you wanna be aware of any current engine modifications you have, or any future plans that you have as far as engine modifications. When you look at these different manufacturers, you wanna ask some questions to yourself and to the manufacturer. Are you staying with the stock compression ratio? Are you planning on upgrading later on? Going with a big bore kit and increasing the compression ratio, that's something to consider. If you're going from 10 to one compression to 10 and a half to one, a cam that works well at 10, at 10, and, at 10 and to one is not gonna work well at 10 and a half to one. Definitely be aware of that. Ask a lot of questions to whichever manufacturer you choose to go with. Most cams, if you're sticking with a stock compression ratio, a lot of cams you could bolt right into an 883 and then convert over to a 1200, 1275, no problem. But like I say, keep future plans in mind and ask a lot of questions to the manufacturer of the camshaft before you make a purchase decision. So let's take a look at an 883. What does a camshaft do to an 883? Now, bear in mind, I had tons of trouble finding a dyno graph with just an 883, but I'm gonna give you an example of what happens when a cam goes into an 883. So for reference, if you're riding a fuel injected 883, your stock horsepower off the showroom floor is about 45 horsepower, and then about, oh, roughly 40, 42, 43 foot-pounds of torque. Now, if you have a stage one done, tuner, exhaust, and all that, I would say you're about 50 horsepower and a little over maybe 50, 52 foot-pounds of torque, right in that neighborhood. Now, the top lines, this is an 883 that's been converted to a 1200 using the Screaming Eagle kit, with Screaming Eagle Street Cannon Mufflers and the Screaming Eagle Tuner. Now, the blue line represents the horsepower, which would be about 67, and then foot-pounds of torque about 75, 76, somewhere in that neighborhood. Now, I had a really hard time finding a dyno graph of an 883 with just a stage one and a camshaft added. 
But this will give you an example of what can be done with keeping the 883 displacement here. This is a fueling 505-515 cam in an 883. Now, this has had some heavy modification done, but they, re they retained the 883 displacement. So it, the horsepower came in a little under 75, it looks like, just a little bit under, and peak torque about 58, 59. Now, like I said, this one's had a little bit more done to it. This has the camshaft, ported heads, beehive springs. They upgraded the compression to 10 to one, changed the lifters and push rods, the ignition, and put a bigger carburetor on it. Now, the springs don't really do anything for horsepower. The compression does. Fueling well, the lifters and push rods, that doesn't have anything to do with increasing the horsepower. But as you can see, it takes quite a bit to make some power when you retain the 883 displacement. So if you have your 883 with a stage one already, air cleaner, exhaust, and a tuner, you're probably looking at, oh, 52, 53 horsepower, and probably closer to about 53, 54, 55 foot pounds of torque. It's hard to find dyno grouse on an 883, so I'm just taking kind of my best stab at it here. But adding the cam to it, I would say you would probably get close to about 55 to 60 horsepower, and uh, roughly close to 55 foot-pounds of torque. Well, that was kind of surprising to see what kind of power an 883 could actually make with keeping the 883 displacement. For that kind of money, you might as well go ahead and upgrade to a 1200. Be a lot cheaper and a lot easier. But if you're really interested in adding a set of cams to your, to your 883, that's just kind of a best example I could give you of what a set of cams would do for your 883 and what kind of performance gains you would get. Whether you plan on just adding cams and leaving it as is as an 883, that's up to you. But whatever you do, whatever cams you choose, make sure they're going to work with any future upgrades you have planned. If you plan on going to a 1200 and changing the heads or upgrading your 883 to a 1250 or 1275, just make sure that cam's going to work with those and whatever compression ratio that you choose to go with. Most mild cams out there, they'll work for the 883 as well as the 1200. But let's go take a look at Harley-Davidson and see what they offer as far as a cam selection. So guys, if you're shopping online for cams from Harley-Davidson, this is about the only cam you're going to see online for the Sportster. The Screaming Eagle Performance 2 585 cam. This cam is their EPA legal cam. This works with the engine as is and also with the Stage 4 kit. This is the same cam that comes in the Screaming Eagle Stage 4 kit. They advertise that it only fits 2014 and later model. So if you have an earlier model, you're probably gonna have to go to the Screaming Eagle catalog where they have a much bigger selection as this is directly out of the Screaming Eagle catalog. Now for this particular set of cams, they say you either have to upgrade to the Screaming Eagle ported heads or you have to add their performance valve spring kit to get these to function properly. Now on a Sportster 1200, Stock, we're looking at about 62 horsepower. This is bone stock, and torque comes in about 67 foot-pounds. Now, with the addition of this cam, using the Screaming Eagle tuner and the Street Cannon mufflers, we're looking at about, oh, 72, 73 horsepower. Peak torque's going to come in about a little over 70 foot-pounds of torque. Now, of course, you could expect quite a bit, a little bit more out of this cam if you were using an aftermarket exhaust system and tuner. Now the 585 cam aside, Harley-Davidson does offer several other camshafts that they don't advertise because they say they're for race use only. During your cam search, you wanna to try to find a cam that is bolt-in, unless you're comfortable with doing any modifications for clearance. Now Harley offers several other cam models here, but they don't offer any dyno graphs or anything on these. Well, I was kind of surprised how soft Harley-Davidson's numbers were over a stage one. But, like I say, that cam's EPA legal, and it's also choked down a little bit, too, by the Screaming Eagle mufflers and the street tuner. So, if you had a good free-flowing aftermarket exhaust and an aftermarket tuner, I'd expect a little bit more out of that cam. As you can see, they offer a wider range of cams, but they don't have any information as far as power numbers on them and what you can expect and what they can do. So, if you're curious to see what a cam could actually do on a stock motor, over your stock W cam on a 1200, this is a perfect example. This is Hammer's Jackhammer 570 cam, one of my favorite cams out there. This is with a cycle shack slip on, high flow air cleaner, and dyno tuned. Now, looking right here, you can see this is your stock cam right here. 
it this the blue line is the jackhammer cam. It gives up absolutely nothing to the stock cam. Like I said earlier, a lot of cams take power from the bottom end and shift it to the top. So right here, you'd actually flip these lines. The blue line would be your jackhammer cam running light down here if it were like a lot of other cams on the market. But if you're just gonna swap a cam and do nothing else, this is one of the best examples I could give you and probably one of the best cams out there you could go with. You can see right off the bat, this cam starts producing more power. They come together at about 3000 RPMs and they kind of stay together at about 3,500. But after 3,500, it is game on as the power climbs all the way up. And at 6,500, we reach about our peak horsepower. And you can see you're close to 88.6 at the peak and 84.6 with the stock cam. That's roughly a straight four horsepower gain just on a cam swap. And that is really impressive with the jackhammer cam. And now this is an example of what Hammer did where they took the stock bike and they went with a 560 cam in it with their Impact 560. Now the red line is stock head, stock cam. The blue line is stock heads in the Impact 560 cam. It did exactly like I showed you in the other chart, was you actually lost power with the 560 cam. It took all the power from down here and moved it all the way up here. So your stock cams are actually gonna outperform this more aggressive cam all the way up to 5,500 RPM. But after 5,500 RPM, that 560 cam takes over and never looks back and climbs right up to 101.6 horsepower. So very, very impressive. Well, Hammer makes some very impressive cams. And honestly, they would probably be my go-to for if you're keeping your stage one and you wanna do no more than a cam swap, that would probably be the way to go is go with the Hammer cam. So perfect example of that they had there was showing you that the stock W cam versus the 560, you could really see how the W cam outperforms the aggressive high performance cam up until the upper RPM range and then it just, it's over from there, it takes off. For me and my riding style on the street, I think the 570 would just be perfect for me because it gains over the W cam all the way through the RPM range, which is really impressive because with all the cams out there, that robbed the low and mid range and put it up top, they kind of did the impossible by creating a cam that runs quiet and also outperforms the W cam throughout the RPM range. That would definitely be the way I would go personally. But let me know what you guys think. What cam would you choose? Would you even choose a cam or would you go all in with the big bore kit and add the cam as well? So, and you 883 guys, if you're riding around on an 883, would you spend the money to put a cam in your 883? or would you just do it all at once and convert over to a 1200? Let me know what you guys' modifications would be. But anyhow guys, I appreciate you watching. I really hope this helped you guys out. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Huh.